Back in our horizontal fit component, if we scroll down and after our props property, if we add a method called data, and this data method will return an object, and within this object we will have our properties for this given component. And the first one we are going to have is going to be called items, and it's going to be of an array type. It will contain all of the items that we are going to be looping through. Then we are going to have max property set to zero, and max property will store the number of items that we want to scroll through minus one. And this is because arrays are zero indexed, meaning that they are starting from zero rather than from one. So having the length of the array, say if we have 10 items, that would return 10. And then obviously we need to duct one to make sure that we're starting from zero. And when we are going to be swapping the items here within this body container, then we'll be using actually the index at which they are actually within the collection. So that's why we are going to start at zero and maximum will be zero to start with in case we don't have any items to loop through. Then the next property will be show and it's going to be set to false by default. And now if we scroll up to our template, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use V if and then show property. So if this show property is set to true, then we are going to show this horizontal fit. Otherwise, we are not going to show it at all. And by default, we're setting this to false because first we are going to check, are there any items in our collection? Is there anything to loop through? If not, that's then, then stay false and obviously hide the fit. Otherwise, we are going to change it to true, at which point the fit will be visible. So now let's add mounted method. And this method is called once our instance has been mounted to the element within the DOM. In other words, when our component is actually ready to be rendered. Okay, I'm going to start with if this duration, which is one of the properties of this component, is less or equal 2000, then what we're going to do is throw new error. And in this error, we're going to say duration must be higher than 2000. And we're doing this check because we're going to use set interval later on. And if this duration would be shorter or equal to the duration that is used for the interval, then we would run into a problem where our feed just goes mad completely. So that's why we're doing this check first. So whenever we're going to be adding this horizontal fit to our page, we need to make sure that the duration is at least 2001 milliseconds. Otherwise, it's just going to throw this error. Okay, so we are going to now check if type of, and we're going for this collection property, triple equal string. So if it's a string, we know that's going to be a URI, some endpoint that we need to call. Otherwise, what we are going to do is simply associate this collection with this items, because we know that in that case, it's going to be an array. So items ready to be processed. So this collection. And after this, we are going to call the method, which we'll add in just a moment. We'll call it initialize. And if we scroll down now, after mount it, we are going to add methods property. And here we are going to add this initialize method. So initialize. Okay, and we're going to start by checking if this items dot length triple equal symbol comparing with zero, which means there are no items, then what we are going to do is simply return nothing, meaning terminating this method. So it doesn't go any further than this. Otherwise, what we're going to do is set this max, we are going to set to this items length minus one, as you may remember, just to make sure that we are working with the correct indexes, our array start from zero. So we need to get the total number of items and deduct one from it. So the last item in our list will have index of total number of my items minus one. So if we have 10 items, it will be nine because we start from zero rather than from one. Okay. And then f after this max, we're going to set this show to true because we want to show the fit if there are items 
in a collection. And right after this, we are going to make a call to another method, this swap. And we are going to leave the implementation of this method for a little bit later on. But for the time being, let's just add the method stop. Okay, now let's have a look at this option when we actually passing through a string representing the endpoints that we need to call. So if the collection is a string rather than array, what we are going to do is to use axios and I'm going to call it on the global window object. So window, then axios. And on this axios, we are going to call method get and we pass this collection, which will contain a string representing this endpoint. And then if it was successful, then we're going to run then method. If it failed for any reason, we are going to call catch method. And now for then, we are going to delegate it to another method called fetch success. So this fetch success. And for catch, we are going to delegate it to this fetch error. And let's create both of these methods. I'm going to add them right after this initialize. First one will be fetch success. I'm just going to copy this name and paste it here. There we go. So that's the first one. And the second one is fetch error. So let's quickly add the method stop as well. And let's work on the implementation of these methods. So success will take response as argument, which will be returned from this Ajax call. And here we are going to do this items equals response, full stop data, because the response will contain this data index, which will contain whatever our endpoint is going to return back in a JSON format. Then we are also going to call this initialize method to make sure that everything that we've done in this else statement is also being processed. So that's the successful response handled. Now for the error, we are going to get error as an argument. And what we're going to do here is simply throw new error and we pass this error through as an argument. And that's all for fetching data using this axis get method. So if we now compile everything again by running npm run def, and if we open our, well, this is compiling, if we open our index.html, and if we have a look at our collection property, you'll see that we only pass an empty string. So what should happen now? If we go back to the browser, now that everything has been compiled, and again, I'm going to open developer tools, and we are going to look at the network. When I'm refreshing the page, and I only want to see Ajax request, so XHR, and if we hit refresh, you'll see this call has been Execute it and it's obviously calling the same location as the page from which we are making this call. So what we are getting in response is just the HTML version of our page. If we open view console, you will see that items now contain this HTML structure, which isn't quite what we after. And have a look at this max. It's 722 items apparently. That's just because obviously the format of the items is invalid. Okay, so if we go back to our Editor, what we are going to do within this horizontal feed before we make this call, we are going to check if this string is empty. But rather than doing all this from within this if block, I'm going to cut this axios block here. And I'm going to, after the initialize, I'm going to add another method called get items. And I'm going to paste it here, then comma after this get items method. But before I'm going to make this call, I'm going to check if this collection triple equal symbol, empty string, then I'm going to throw an error. So throw new error, and I'm going to say invalid end point. There we go. And now from within this if statement, I can just make a call to this method. So this get items. And if we now compile everything again, so run npm run def, and if we preview everything in a browser once all this has finished. There we go. If we refresh the page now, before we do this, let's go to the console. You'll see we have invalid endpoint now because obviously our endpoint is now empty. The string we pass through is empty, doesn't contain any endpoint. If we were to call, for instance, within the current directory, so full stop forward slash data dot JSON, and I'm going to quickly create this file here. So let's just create data dot JSON. And let's just return an empty array for the time being. And if we run the same thing, refresh, and you can see the error is gone because now the file exists. We passed something 
through this collection property and it is a valid string which represents the endpoint which could be called if we now go back to the browser let's see the network tab data json and response is an empty array now you have probably noticed that we don't see our feed on a page anymore and this is because if we go back to the view console you'll see that show property is set to false this is because our items property doesn't contain any items the same would happen if i was to pass an empty array here directly associated with our collection property if we go back to the browser refresh the page exactly same result we don't see the feed the show property sets to false our items collection is empty and if we go to the network this time obviously if we have an array we don't make any ajax calls and if we check elements you'll see that what we get is just this placeholder it doesn't even display the structure of the feed this time